Hello everyone, I'm Rafael Alvarez and this is Alvarez Metalworks. So today what we have is an unboxing um, and just an initial review of the Harbor Freight 20 ton hydraulic shot press. Um, I picked it up here today, it's actually right down here, you can't see it right now. Um, I picked it up today, the box got kind of banged up when we were when bringing it home. So hopefully all the parts are in it because the box is ripped up pretty good. Um, that being said, let's just get straight to it. I'm going to open this up, I'm going to assemble it, show you guys how easy it is to assemble, and just give you, like I said, my initial review on it, and if I think that it's a good product. Um, I got it with a coupon, it was $159 I believe it was with the coupon. So um, yeah, let's get to it. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to start by opening up this box here. Uh, I don't know what tools I need, so as I open this up, if I need some tools, I'll stop the video and just kind of edit it in. I don't want to drag this video out too long. I'm assuming this is going to be the jack. So that's the jack, the pins, and the springs and all the bolts. So that's helpful because I was concerned that I would have lost one of the bolts or whatever because of this big rip in the box. Here's our instructions. Here's one of our arbor plates. I was actually concerned that these arbor plates were going to be cast iron of some sort, but looking at them, I can see the curve from a plasma cut, so these are steel. So, 
that's all the parts. Let me quickly look at the instructions and then I'll get back to you guys. Okay everyone, so after a quick glance at the instructions, um, these are the tools you're going to need. Um, you may need something else later, but I don't think so. Um, you're going to need a 14 millimeter wrench. You're going to need those for the, the spring bolts. Okay. You're going to need a 17 millimeter socket, preferably a deep wall. I just grabbed this one, it'll work. Uh, 17 millimeter box wrench. And then you're going to need a 5 16 box, box wrench and a 5 16 socket. Now, this is from China. This is probably metric, but 5 16 fits tight on the bolts. Not too tight, but tight enough. It'll work. Okay? So, first things first, you have this angle iron here. It's about, looks, I don't have a measuring tape on me, but it looks like it's about an inch and a half. Yeah, about an inch and a half by an inch and a half angle. Uh, about an eighth inch thick. And it's got these tabs on the end that seem to be about three sixteenths. Um, two bolts. If you look here at the, the C channel, you have four bolt holes here. The C channel, the, the open end of the C channel goes out. Um, the bottom two bolts, the bolt holes in the C channel, is where this attaches to. But not only does this attach to it, but you have the legs, which are these angle iron pieces. Okay, the angle iron faces out like this. And then that cross member is between each one of the legs. So you're going to probably need a little bit of assistance or you'll struggle a little bit. Um, it's possible to do with one person, but I have my daughter here, so she's going to give me a hand real quick. So let me set this down. Oh, one last thing. These bolts that they give you, you um, need to keep a really close eye. There's four of them that are actually just a tad bit longer. Those four that are a tad bit longer are the first four you're going to need. They're for the leg and the cross member and the seat channel because they go through three legs. The other eight only go through, go through two. So just keep that in mind. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to initially just set this down on the floor like this. Um, Adriana. I'm going to have her hold this up so it doesn't fall on my head. Set it down like that. I'm going to grab one of these longer bolts with the nut and washer. The bolt's going to go from the outside in. Place the washer on and then the nut. Okay, so now we have this bracket here, okay? This bracket here goes from there to there. What you'll notice is there's going to be a gap here, and that's okay. That's the way it's designed. I don't like it, but that's the way it's designed. Um, it's not going to be a problem. Just get one of your shorter bolts. Place it through here with the washer, then the nut, okay, another shorter bolt, through here, washer, then the nut, okay, grab another one.
Okay, so I'm just going to snug these down real quick. Um, I'm going to get the other side put together and then I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I have the base together, and again, I just have those snug because I'm a little concerned about having this square. Um, so I don't want to have to go back and move some things up or whatever. Um, the next step is to grab the pins. These two pins here. Okay, I'm just going to throw them in in this location right here, which is just one step down. Okay, then I'm going to grab this piece, which is the base where you set your items on that you're pressing, and bring this in from the top. Be very careful not to smash your hands here. You have to spread apart the the C channel. And then it just rests on those pins. Um, when you go to adjust this, you just grab this, move your pin, and adjust. Okay? That's all that's to that part. So now our next step will be taking our top section. Um, right now it's upside down. That goes here and we'll bolt in with the longer bolts. So for now I'm going to rest that right here. I'm going to grab the four bolts that I need. These are the long ones. Got my wrenches ready to go. If you're doing this by yourself, I highly suggest placing everything into position for you to easily grab it, okay? This stuff's not really, really heavy, but it's not, it's not exactly light. Um, you really only need two for now. One for each side, and then the other two will go in just fine. Okay, now this plate is going down. Those bolts are in, this other sub's piece of cake. It's walking apart from here on out. Okay, so now I got the top part assembled. Um, the only thing I'm going to caution you guys on is um, when the factory welded these up, there was a pretty significant gap. Um, I don't know what these are, they look to be like 4 inch C channel. Um, I'm not going to measure them because it doesn't matter. But the gap between this top piece where the C-channel slides in was wider than the actual C-channel by, I don't know, maybe about a good quarter inch or so. So when you bolt these in, they're going to suck this in, okay, on both sides. Very important that you go back and make sure both of them are tight. Tighten one, tighten the other, go back and tighten the both of them again, okay? <coughs> and it's just because it's, it's squishing it down and we're relieving some of the tension off the initial bolt. Our next step is to grab this piece. We got some metal rolling around in there. What it is, I don't know. Doesn't really matter. And probably from the welding process. Anyway, you're going to grab your eyelet bolts, you're going to grab your 14 millimeter wrench. Now, this is going to insert this direction. And go just like this, okay? Before you put that in though, you're going to take your eye bolts 
and you are going to drop them down with the eyelet on the top. Actually, you won't even need your 14 millimeter wrench at this point. Uh, you're not going to need it until you adjust your spring tension. Make them both somewhat match. Take this in here and just set it down. Okay? Um, your jack's going to bolt to this. I would recommend probably not installing the jack just yet. Um, put your springs on and then put your jack into place. Otherwise, it's going to get real heavy to pick this up and hook your springs on. So grab your springs. Um, you're going to hook them here like this and at the very top right here there's just a rod that goes across there. You're going to hook them onto those rods. Okay. There you go. Okay, now your next step is to grab your jack, decide which side you want to be your front. I'm going to leave the sticker up front. And place your jack in a position. Okay, there's two holes. And this flange right here, this plate, and there's, there was one tool I forgot to mention. There's some Allen bolts. Those drop down through the jack holes. They're catty corner, kitty corner, however you want to pronounce it. And that plate is actually threaded. So you place those in there. Thread them in, tighten them up with an X key, okay? Okay, so this is all put together. Um, I still got to snug down the bottom bolts. I'm not going to do that just yet. Um, but what I wanted to, to tell you guys is don't just start using this. In the instructions, as well as on the bottle jack itself, it says to make sure that you bleed and top off the hydraulic oil fluid in the, in the jack itself. Okay, so what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to open this valve. Okay, on the back of this bottle jack is a small little rubber plug. Okay, you can pop this out with a screwdriver. Just be careful not to tear it up. Do not just stick regular oil in it. I'm using liquid ranch hydraulic jack oil. Any hydraulic jack oil will work. Um, what you're going to want to do is make sure it's got some sort of a little filler thing on it so you don't make a big mess. So you just squeeze it in there until it overflows. not full because I can't see it just making a mess grab me a rag Can't tell if it's full. Yeah, it looks to be full right now. So, expect to have a little bit of spillage. That's just the way it's going to go down. And take your rubber plug. Actually, no, not yet.
Leave your plug out. And then what you're going to do is you're going to jack the handle up. And I know that there's the release was never tightened back up. That's fine. I'm just going to do this jacking motion on here just for a little bit. Then I'm going to come over here and tighten it up. So I'm tightening up the, the valve here. It's all tightened up. I actually don't even need the handle to jack this up because there's no pressure. So I'm going to take a rag. I'm going to just make sure that this area is clear. And now I'm going to start jacking this up. And what it's going to do is it's going to lower this. But I'm doing this to just try to bleed out any air. I'm actually going to go through this whole cycle probably two or three times. Um, make sure once it's compressed all the way up, I'll top off all the fluids um, and then I'll plug it back up. And then everything should work just fine. You're going to want to test it out a few times and make sure it works. Um, so um, I'll be right back. I'm going to do that. I'm going to tighten up the bolts on this. I'm going to you know, smash a couple things with it. And then I'll be back and, and let you guys know what I think of the overall product and, and review it for you guys. Okay everyone, I got it all bolted tight. Um, I've got my spring tension adjusted. I pretty much snug these all the way down. This one could probably use be could probably be snug down a little bit more. Um, for those that don't know, these springs are just to put tension. So when you release the pressure on the jack, that it pulls it back up. Outside of that, these springs are pretty much useless. Okay, so they're not, it's not like they're critical. You don't need lock, um, nylon lock nuts on here. Um, it's just simply just to get the pressure off the jack. Okay. Um, I smashed this piece of, it's actually, I don't know, 316 plate steel. That I've run a bunch of beads of, you know, a bunch of weld beads on, and I smashed it pretty good. You know, if you guys look here, you can see the the circle where the arbors were at, and you know, it did did quite the number on it. Okay, that was the uh, the first time I jack, you know, jack it up and put a lot of pressure on it, and. That gave me a pretty good, you know, it's, it wasn't going to press it out and punch a hole through it. It's just not going to. For you to punch holes through something, the, the die set and the plunger need to be almost like a scissor type. And that just wasn't going to happen here. So it would never punch a hole through. It may rip it at some point, but I highly doubt it. But what I was able to figure out by doing that is I could see this thing at its maximum pressure. I can see it stretching the frame um, and just putting a lot of load here on the bolts and, and everything to be able to see how this would react under that kind of load. Um, my initial reaction is a, is a thumbs up. Um, I can't imagine that you're going to need to press anything to that level on this press brake. Or not press brake, excuse me, hydraulic press. Um, the welds themselves, they look terrible, um, but what I can say is that like on the angle iron pieces and stuff like that, they're welded on both sides, they're not just welded on one. So you have a terrible weld on both sides, <laughs> but they hold. Um, time will only tell how long they'll hold. In all honesty, um, I'm looking at areas where there are actual welds and trying to think, is there anything where the weld would fail while this thing is under pressure? And to be perfectly honest with you, I have to just say no. Um, the welds right here, these are not under any kind of stress whatsoever. Okay, these are just guides to keep this thing centered on here. Okay, so there's no stress there. Um, this bar right here, there's no stress on this bar, really. I mean, there is a little bit, but you have this, this rod, this solid rod right here that comes up in here and is fully welded all the way around. Um, the only way I 
can tell if that rod goes all the way up to the top to where the base of the jack is, is to cut, cut this off and look at it. And I, I'm just not going to do that. <laughs> um, but what I can tell you is that this is really thin rectangle tube. And the amount of pressure that I just put on it, if that was just welded to the face down here, it would have bent the hell out of this. So that rod must go all the way up. Okay. Um, the welds right here where the jack are, again, they're superficial. They're not under any real stresses because everything, all the pressure here is linear. Okay, it's going from the, the solid rod to the jack to the jack's piston up to here. Okay, the C channels, there's no welds on the C channel with the exception of the spring, the bars will hold the springs, which again are only under the, the tension or pressure of the springs. Um, not any jacking force, not any of that 20 ton. Um, there's a couple welds here. There's a, it looks to be like, uh, it's not quite one inch. It's probably three quarter plate at the top of this where the jack's putting pressure on. That's welded. Um, but the welds again are not under any kind of stress because the plate is butted up against these C channels. So it's going to be pressing on the C channel and using the C channel for structure, not the weld itself. Okay, so the weld is really just to hold the plate into place so that gravity doesn't just let it fall down on the ground. It's no different than having these sitting here. If I put a weld on here, that weld is just to make sure the plate doesn't fall off. But the pressure itself is being applied to the C channel and to the plate. So outside of, like I said, outside of when I look at everything, outside of the welds that are on here, there's really no welds on here that are under that kind of load. Um, there is a couple of, they look to be like inch and three quarter, maybe two by two angle irons that attach this C channel to this C channel, as well as these straps. Those could be under stress, okay? Um, to a certain degree, okay? The only stresses that those would be under would be possibly taking the C-channel and splitting it apart like that. Because the C-channel rests on these dowels, those welds are basically to keep the C-channel in line parallel with each other. It's not any of the 20-ton force going out or pressing down. It would be like more spreading apart. So I could see where those ones could potentially fail. Um, I highly doubt it. Okay, time will tell. If they do fail, it's a simple, you know, clean up the paint on there, break out the MIG welder and, and fire it up and problem solved, but I seriously doubt that those will fail. Uh, matter of fact, I don't know of anybody that's ever said or given a review where one of these has failed on them. If the jack fails, it's simple. Go buy a new jack. You don't even have to buy a Harbor Freight jack. You can go get any jack. It could be a 10 ton, it could be a 20 ton, whatever. Uh, I got a bunch of these at work. I'll probably buy myself from my job. I'll probably buy, you know, two to four of them because I can use them around the shop for various things. And, you know, if this ever fails on me, then at least I have another jack. Uh, outside of that, I mean, the only thing I don't really like about it is that it rocks around a lot. You do have the ability to bolt it to the floor. Um, there's holes drilled into the angle iron legs on here. Um, for shops that don't need to move things around in there, that could be an option. For me, that's not an option. Okay, I'm gonna probably move this thing around the shop who knows how many times. So, you know, I'll get over the wiggling around stuff. Um, to be honest, the only reason I'm gonna be using this is for um, pressing bearings off of axles or things like that. Um, initially what I'm going to use it for is the throw out bearing on the manual swap on Project Pathfinder. I need to press the bearing onto um, this little sleeve thing. So, um, I'm going to be using it but probably not a whole hell of a lot so it'll probably be shuffled around here in the shop. Um, if I had to give it a, a rating of 1 out of 10, I'd give it an 8. Um, those two points aren't for failure reasons. They're just because 
you know, I can't give it a 10 if I think that there's room for improvement. And there's definitely some room for improvement, um, but I think it'll work just fine for anybody who needs it um, without making those adjustments. With that being said, um, thanks for watching. Like always, subscribe, comment, and like, and I'll talk to you guys later.